Hi, I'm Amy Shannon, and this is another episode of Exposed Mobility Impaired Access Denied. One of the things that I wanted to be clear on some of the things that I will be uh, recording and sharing in some of the upcoming episodes. Um, one that, uh, some people may wonder what does what exactly does mobility impaired mean and what would it mean to for something to be inaccessible or difficult um, to access? Um, so I just kind of I was thinking about those questions the other day um, until I had to use a mobility aid. Um, it first started out with um, a cane. Um, then it um, I had to use a walker. Um, I used a rollerblader. Um, and I liked that walker because it, you could sit down if you got too tired or it had its little storage space. And um, I was fine with that until my feet decided to not work very well. And when I fell and I fell on top of my walker, so that wasn't very helpful. Um, so then I had to figure out how else to get around when my legs or my feet do, do not want to work. And I upgraded to first a manual wheelchair. And that's there's nothing wrong with having that, um, except that because I had to maneuver, unless I was being wheeled or pushed around, sounds like that. Um, when um, I used the, you know, you have to wheel with your hands and having rheumatoid arthritis and other issues such as tremors in both of my hands as well as other parts of my body, um, it got very difficult to push around. Um, my son did a GoFundMe and I was able, and he helped me get a mobility scooter. So that way I could go out and still be um, semi-independent. Um, then I saved up money so I could buy myself an electric wheelchair it's not the best, but it's all that I could afford at the time. Um, it uh, it's it's lightweight and it's more heavy in the back. Um, if you check out my video about my actual uh, electric wheelchair, um, you can see the details of that. Eventually, I want to upgrade to a better one where the weight is more distributed. But also, so it is still lightweight and can be put in um, the trunk of the car. Um, I can't drive. I stopped driving. I think it was about 2019. Uh, and it, I remember the exact moment when I had to stop driving. I had a tremor in my foot. It um, made my right foot step hard on the gas. And obviously sped up the car. I was fortunate that there was no one in front of me. By the time I had could react and take my foot off the gas and apply the brake. If someone was in front of me, um, I could have hit them. I also had my son Lewis in the car. And that was the moment that I said, okay, that's it. I can't drive anymore. I still have my driver's license, um, but when it expires in well, 2026, then I will exchange it for a non-driver ID. Sometimes just holding on to something makes you think you're more independent than you actually are. And I had been driving since I was 20, um, so uh, it's it wasn't an easy decision but that instance made it best decision I could have ever made at that time. So uh, I really enjoyed driving, but because I could, I could help people. I could drive my dad places. I could drive my grandmother places. I wouldn't, I didn't have to rely on other people for rides. Now that's something I have to do. I have to schedule my appointments around other people. Uh, now that I live in an area where um, 
I was there are uh, grocery stores or pharmacy, and even a doctor who took my insurance is right across the parking lot. So I can go there uh, with some independence. I don't need a chaperone to go with me every place. Drive me around. That was one of the things. So being mobility impaired, basically, you can't move around without some type of aids. It is possible. Um, there are many reasons why someone may be in a wheelchair. Um, I am fortunate that I can still walk around my home. Um, sometimes I get up and my feet don't want to work. So I end up falling or sitting back down quickly, very quickly, um, and use my chair whenever possible. I try to do things that I used to be able to do. Uh, help out sometimes when I try to be too helpful because just because I used to be able to do something does not necessarily mean I can do it now. But I still get the full clothes and I can put the dishes away out of the dishwasher. The rest of the chores kind of fall on my son William, but I'm lucky that I have a child who loves to clean. Well, he's an adult now, <laughs> but he loves to clean. So he helps me more than I help him. Um, I know it's not easy for them to see their mother who used to run around the yard with um, do cartwheels, which they thought was magic when, when they were little. Um, become so tired, forgetful, say or do the wrong thing, stuff that was never anything like me. Um, so, but this is more about why uh, I, I didn't realize, and I think until you are in a situation um, you don't know just because you perceive how someone is and how their life is because they have trouble walking or they have to use some type of aid. I remember um, what before my father was put in a um, a memory uh, care facility. Um, because he has dementia. Um, and as he got older, he used to shuffle when he walked. Uh, and I was always afraid that he was going to fall. Uh, once he was put in the memory care facility, um, he had automatic he was automatically given a um, a walker. and if he walks without it, he falls. I had asked um, a doctor I was seeing if um, there is a cause and effect relationship between when you have dementia and your ability to do something simple, such as walking, because my father could always walk on his own, um, even if it was just shuffling along. But um, as soon as he was in that facility, he, um, he has to use a walker. He has reminders to remind him that he has to use a walker because otherwise he falls down and he doesn't want people to help him get back up. At least when I fall down, I am very fortunate if someone is there to help pick me back up. Um, so, but when you have a mobility uh, aid, now it could be temporary. You break your leg, you have knee surgery, you, uh, you know, you're temporarily using crutches, you're using one of those roll away, I don't know what they call them, those little scooters, like if you hurt your foot that, you know, you could rest your knee on and roll around on. Um, you have to use a cane. I found when I was, when I had knee surgery um, that I hated crutches. And as soon as I could put weight on my, my foot that, or my leg that had the knee surgery, 
um, well, it was always my left leg, uh, three of them, um, that I would use a cane. I preferred using the cane over the crutches, but um, you have to do what you have to do. Getting, um, when you're mobility impaired and using an aid, sometimes you can do stairs, other times you cannot. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you just, you uh, maybe one step up would be fine. Sometimes you have to use a ramp. It depends on how you are able to move your feet around. Um, even in a wheelchair, um, there are, when you think about going places, if you're going to a grocery store or a department store or um, some type of public place, medical facilities, things like that, automatic doors, or they have that button that you can press and will open the door for you. Um, those are easily accessible. If they are have multiple floors, they have an elevator. Um, and so that is definitely accessible. You can go in and out without having to maneuver the door yourself. Um, when I go to the market, usually it's only to pick up a few items. Um, instead of spending extra money to have a delivery service bring me my groceries, I do that when I have a large amount of groceries. Um, but, excuse me, but stay hydrated. Um, there are also places that don't have. Yes, they say they are handicapped accessible, mobility impaired accessible, and maybe they are, but to get inside of that building, um, usually if you are going to your outside of the building, usually the door pulls out, and when you're inside going out, it pushes out. Now, when I'm in my wheelchair, or my mobility scooter, I don't, they are almost the same width so they can fit through a standard size store. And I have to go into a building that does not have a button or it does not open automatically. It is hard, for, I can do it, but it's very hard for me to open the door and I have to maneuver my chair or my scooter around because of the angle of it and be able to pull the door wide open so I can push through and still hold on to the door. Sometimes um, when my legs are working properly, I, I support the door with not just my hand, but also my foot. So it doesn't close on me as I am going into the, the store, the building, whatever. Um, coming out, it's easier to push out than to push in or pull out, excuse me. Um, I can hold the door open, um, but it depends on the side of the door that gets pushed out. If there's two doors and both open, I will go to the one on the left because my hand controls on my mobility scooter and my walk or my, excuse me, my wheelchair are on my right hand, on my right hand side. So I cannot maneuver a right hand open unless that's the only door. Then I have to actually use my left hand to try to control my right sided hand controls. Um, you know, sometimes they have doors that will only open, one will only open. Um, the other way that makes it accessible um, is that if someone is nice enough to hold the door open for you. Um, and you get that. Um, I have seen people rush over as they saw me going to a store or if they're coming out of building and I'm going by, they'll ask me if I was going in so they would hold the door for me. Um, there are a lot of very nice and helpful people out there.
I also get people that try to cut in front of me because I'm too slow. Um, they don't want to get stuck behind the person in the wheelchair or the scooter. They've cut. I've had people cut in front of me with their carts. Um, when I go around carts, uh, stores, um, I go in, if I'm by myself, and I'm going to the supermarket, the supermarket aisles and air walkways and entrances are pretty clear so I can go in and out with my scooter. Um, it's easy, uh, it takes wide turns, so I have to be careful and I don't wanna take up too much space because it's long also, it's longer than my wheelchair um, and uh, to get around some things, sometimes I have to actually use my wheelchair to go to the store, depending on the store, um, stores like uh, the Dollar Tree or uh, any kind or the Dollar General or something to the effect where they would have a lot of displays even in front of the entranceway because then it's hard to maneuver. Um, I don't always go to those stores because, you know, I have to do that. Um, I can't just go uh, independently. And they, the nearest store for me of the, that is uh, the Dollar Tree, you know, which has a variety of things from, you know, any, from anywhere from $1.25 on up to, I don't know what the limit is, 20 bucks maybe, uh, since they changed their pricing. Uh, but when you go in, the aisles are smaller. Um, there's a lot of displays right there in front of you because they want to grab that attention. Um, so if I want to go there, um, I take my wheelchair. Uh, if I want to go by myself, uh, then I would still use my wheelchair, uh, which I don't like using it for long, very long distances. But I also have to maneuver around things. So if I have to go to, um, say, get blood work at a, a urgent care facility that's not too far from me, I have used my wheelchair. And I have a doctor's office that's in that building, too. So I have used my wheelchair to take myself to the doctors. Um, and I don't take the scooter, even though that would be much better, because once you get into the office, you can't maneuver around and there's not room for a big scooter inside the doctor's office, the actual examination room, the waiting room, um, and things like that. So, uh, you know, you have to be aware of, you're aware of more things to see. What can I do and what can I do? Where can I go by myself and what, um, where can't I go by myself? Um, and part of these uh, this video series that I'm putting together um, is to show not just the people that or the buildings or areas that are inaccessible when they should be accessible. Um, they're not just they sh just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean you don't want to go to a liquor store or uh, you don't want to go to the post office or you don't want to go to a restaurant. Uh, I've got, on my birthday, I went to a restaurant, my children took me to a restaurant and I, uh, I had my wheelchair, but because of the out, you know, the outlining of the, you know, where the, the, tables and things where I didn't want to be in the way. And a lot of times I feel like I'm in the way if I'm using my chair or my scooter. So when I went to the restaurant, because I was just going to sit down anyways, I held on to my son Williams arm. I, um, I do that when I have to go into places um, where there's not even, you know, a good space to where my, my need to bring in my chair. Um, or it's easier just to hold on to someone. Uh, so 
I don't always, uh, that's, I have, you know, I have been independent my entire life. I have the oldest child of five. My mother taught me how to be independent and strong and how to take care of others. The most important lesson she ever showed me, not told me, showed me was how to be kind. And I try to do that. I've made so many mistakes. And sometimes I was unkind, but I try not to be unkind, even to someone who may be unkind to me. Um, I think it's very important that you don't, you don't know why someone is sitting in, in a wheelchair. Maybe their legs work, maybe their legs don't work. You don't know why someone shuffles when they walk. Or you see a car parked in a handicap space and they have a little card or on their plate and they just get out of their car and just walk. You don't know what, what their disability is. They're, you know, it's possible that they have their, they have some type of impairment and they qualify because you have to have a doctor's note. You just don't, unless somebody is handing out these cards for people to use. I have one because those cards that they give you when you go to the, you know, you have your doctor fill out this form and then you bring it to your local clerk's office or wherever it hands those out. And they give you a temporary one, say like you're on crutches, you could get one for six months, or they give you one for five years if it's basically a permanent disability and you can always get a new one. If you are able to drive, then you will get a license plate. I have a card and I bring it uh, with me uh, when my son takes me places because it's attached to the person at the car. Uh, or he, if he has to take me someplace, um, I, I get, I keep that in his car basically, um, so that when he does take me places, um, he can use that. Or when he knows he's going to take me out, he can park, hopefully, in uh, the handicapped parking closest to my uh, building entrance, uh, and. He uses that. He does not use it when I'm not in the car. And I know that. And he actually is the one that reminds me, oh, mom, you got to put it up. You got to take it down. Uh, but you can't drive with it hanging down. So um, that's something to know. Uh, but in order to park in a handicapped accessible parking spot, you need to have either a license plate or a play card. There may be other states may have other requirements. I live in New York State, so I know what their requirements are. And they have signs and some say van accessible. And there is a reason why handicapped parking, there will be a space at some point on one side or the other of the of the parking spaces with blue lines with stripes. Now, you don't park in that because those are for people who want to get in and out, but especially if they have to use, excuse me, some type of wheelchair crutches or something to get out of the car or they're driving a passenger and the passenger is the one who is disabled and they need help getting out and it is not always easy to find that spot. So sometimes if it's uh, on the driver side is the only spot they have it, my son will park a little bit on that so I can get out on the other side because the other side might be just a regular parking spot or another handicap accessible spot. So that way I can get out and try to leave some type of space, but never too much to where he is in those stripes 
you are in those stripes, you are preventing somebody from being able to get in and out of their vehicle or in and out of a vehicle. So there is accessible completely in and out, whether you walk or you use a wheelchair uh, or anything like that. And then they have the grocery stores have those drivable carts. Um, I've used one before, was very nervous. And I'm like, well, like a scooter better, but it has what my scooter does not have. And which is a large basket. When I use my scooter, I have a, a basket in front that I have a bag in. So I, I can put groceries in it as I'm shopping. And I also take grocery bags, uh, the tote bags, things, hang them from the uh, sides of my, the handlebars. And I put my groceries in there as I do shopping and then I go and I check out. Uh, and I am lucky that like, for like, you know, I needed to get a 12 pack of soda or some juice or milk that I have space on my scooter I have two places where I can place my feet. So in the flat area of my scooter, I could put things like juice or milk or soda in that area. And it went tip over and place my feet up higher on the other spot. So I could buy those type of things. Usually if I buy that kind of stuff, it's with a larger amount of groceries and I use a delivery service. Part of me doing this um, is because I want to help other people. Um, I have uh, some people in my life have found it difficult to deal with the fact that I'm disabled, that there are things wrong with me that cannot be fixed um, or whatever their reasons are is up to them. I just wake up every morning. I make myself get out of bed and get dressed, make my bed, even if I don't feel well and I'm going to lay down. I still get dressed. I think the only time I didn't really get out of bed much at all was when I had COVID or the severe flu and I couldn't, I just, you know, you're not moving. I just laying in bed under the covers. But any other day, I get up, I get dressed, and I look forward to what my day is. I have a great support system. I am the roommate of two of my sons and my future daughter-in-law. I finally, after so many years, have my own space. And I like that I have a door I can open and close. And I like, I found that I liked, I like living with my children. And they're not living with me, I'm living with them. And when no one's here, I realize that I like it when they are. Even if we're all just in our rooms doing the, you know, our thing, our own thing. You know, I, I read, I, I write, I, I have a hobby. I have a relationship with authors from around the world, which I love. And I wake up and every day I give myself a purpose. I think it's very important to have, for your life to have purpose and giving whatever that means to you is important. Some days are easier to push through than others. And I'm usually better in the morning than the afternoon, but I do my best. So I will, um, once the, uh, right now we're in the middle of a heat wave, so I will be, once it's starting to get cooler out, I will be doing 
more outside videos and showing more exposing things that are both good and not so good uh, and accessible and not accessible. And of course, if you are someone who has had problems with uh, your mobility impaired or impaired in some way, and you have hit roadblocks or found there are places that you can't go to for whatever reason, let me know. Maybe we could share our information. Maybe something can be done. So the laws of what is accessible and not accessible are not so vague. And I just say that because but I am still, I printed it out, I am still studying the um, American Disability Act. Um, they created it in the 1980s, it was updated in 1990, and then again in 2010. Um, I wanted to know what the federal and state laws were for being accessible. And I will also be sharing that information um, as I gather it. So there'll be videos, there'll be informational videos, um, you know, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, um, anything that um, I can, I have to use. I have um, a lot of things I've had to adapt for my, my own things. I can't use glassware because I have tremors and I have dropped and broken my share of glass. I, uh, if I put the dishes away, I am very, very careful if there are glass or I ask for help depending on how shaky my hands may be that day. I eat with, uh, Actually, it's the best way to eat soup, which I've discovered. The Japanese soup spoons are very deep. And so I wish I had thought about that or eat soup for years. What I like about them now is that if I'm eating soup or ramen or whatever I decide to eat, I eat pretty much stuff that is simple to make. And sometimes I eat like a little kid. But I don't care. I'm hungry. This is what I want to eat. I still cut the crust off my bread. I eat canned ravioli and spaghetti rolls. I don't care. I eat pudding and applesauce and grapes and bananas, and sometimes chips and whatever I decide I want to eat. Um, but I've adapted. I have paper plate or not paper plates, plastic plates, various sizes. Some have a little lip, some are flat. Um, small forks are, and are easier. Um, I, if I use a knife, I'm very careful, um, and I actually will hold whatever I'm cutting with, like a towel or a Kevlar glove wrapped around my hand, so I don't cut myself because I'm Um, but, you know, there are things, like, I want to do, and I find a way to see what would make that job easier. I have to eat. And so what I liked about the Japanese soup spoons, I got metal ones. And even when I shake, it doesn't spill my soup. I wear, well, a makeshift bib. I tried one of those really big bibs for people who can't really feed themselves. I didn't like it. So now I just took the towel hand towel right here and that's it um but you know i find what what works for me and what i can do um as soon as i years ago when i started having tremors in my sleep and i had fallen on the floor i was uh able to get a, a hospital bed um with railings um through my insurance and it sounds kind of funny but I love it because not only I'm not falling out of bed um but it's like a regular bed and it's adjustable which is like 
if you go out and buy yourself a real adjustable bed, you're going to spend thousands of dollars. Me, I just got a, you know, it's, it's a twin bed and it is perfect for me. It's just me and my stuffed animals and sometimes my cat. We have a lot of chats. He comes in and likes to be all cuddly. And now that I cut my hair because I was tired of losing my hair, he likes to rub his head on my head. So it's kind of like we're petting each other. It's weird, I know. But if you have a disability, there are ways to do things that in ways that you never thought of or you want to be able to still do something and no matter how severe your physical impairment may be uh, i think you could you can get through it you could figure out okay what can i do it's like i have sometimes i can't see uh, my my eyes go blurry so I have my computer or my Kindle, or I listen, uh, read to me, or I listen to audiobooks. Um, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I read a lot. I use magnifying glasses so I can read. I put my Kindle and my computer on larger print so I can see better. I can't always see, but I just kind of make help, uh, you know, if I need help, I, I ask for it. That's like the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life is ask for help, especially for my kids when I took care of them. And they just say, Mom, shut up. You took care of us, now it's our turn to take care of you. And it is still not easy. I had to figure out how to be a mom to adult children and now I am relying on them for help but I still like to do what I possibly can do for myself sometimes I push too hard sometimes I do things I forgot I can't do and then my son just say you know it's your fault you cannot or it's your fault that you, this happened because you know you're not supposed to do that. So it's not easy. I just didn't expect at 53 that I would be in a chair. Um, but, you know, life happens and sometimes it happens with not a fist. So I pushed through, got my kids raised, and then now. Yeah, I just take more naps and I get tired a lot easier I, I, than I did when I was chasing them around the yard. Uh, but anyway, I hope you tune in to my video series. Sometimes I'll have some discussions, sometimes I'll just show, sometimes I'll just tell, but I'll always inform and you can always contact me. You can email me at my email address, amyshan75 at gmail.com, or you can comment in um, the comment section below. These video series will only be on YouTube, but you can share them on your social media. I'll be sharing mine on my social media, and I hope that you share as well. I think more people should be aware whether they can walk or not, of their surroundings. So this has been Amy Shannon, and I will talk to you soon. Stay tuned for my next episode.